Lord our God, in this great sacrament, we come into the presence of Jesus Christ, your Son, born of the Virgin Mary and crucified for our salvation. May we who declare our faith in this fountain of love and mercy drink from it the water of everlasting life through Christ our Lord. Amen. together the divine praises found on the last page of the missalette on the bottom under reposition. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be his most precious blood. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the Holy Spirit, the Consoler. Blessed be the Great Mother of God, Mary the Most Holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be St. Joseph, her most chaste spouse. Blessed be God with his angels and in his saints.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
children of the parish are invited to come and enjoy the children's liturgy of the word. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Rise up in splendor, Jerusalem. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick clouds cover the peoples. But upon you the Lord shines, and over you appears his glory. Nations shall walk by your light, and kings by your shining radiance. Raise your eyes and look about. They all gather and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters in the arms of their nurses. Then you shall be radiant at what you see. Your heart shall throb and overflow, for the riches of the sea shall be emptied out before you. The wealth of the nations shall be brought to you. Caravans of camels shall fill you, dromedaries from Midian and Ephah, all from Sheba shall come bearing gold and frankincense, proclaiming the praises of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks be God. St. Paul to the Ephesians, brothers and sisters, you have heard of the stewardship of God's grace 
that was given to me for your benefit, namely, that the mystery was made known to me by revelation. It was not made known to people in other generations as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and the prophets by the Spirit. That the Gentiles are co-heirs, members of the same body, and co-partners in the promise in Christ Jesus through the gospel. The word of the Lord. Judea in the days of King Herod, behold, Magi from the east arrived in Jerusalem, saying, Where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star at its rising, and have come to do him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was greatly troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. Assembling all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it has been written through the prophet, And you, Bethlehem, land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, since from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and ascertained from them the time of the star's appearance. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the child. When you have found him, bring me word that I too may go and do him homage. After their audience with the king, they set out. And behold, the star that they had seen at its rising preceded them, until it came and stopped over the place where the child was. They were overjoyed at seeing the star, and on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They prostrated themselves and did him homage. Then they opened their treasures and offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed for their country by another way. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks, guys. Well, good morning and Happy New Year. If you have ever lost anything of some importance, you know that it can be pretty unsettling, <laughs> excuse me, it never feels good to discover that you've misplaced your wallet 
or your keys or your phone. And what do we do when that happens? Well, we look in all of the usual places, of course. Your keys might be in your jacket pocket or in your purse or still in the door. Your cell phone might be on the passenger seat of your car or between the couch, couch cushions or on the kitchen counter or maybe in the bottom of your backpack. Your wallet might have accidentally slipped out of your back pocket and is now stuck under the seat of your car or on the floor of the movie theater, which you were all just at, or might even be in the register of a store where you had just checked out. These are the likeliest places, the obvious places, the first places you look. But if we can't find these items in the places they usually are, well, then we're in a whole lot of trouble. When that happens, we're now forced to sort of think outside the box and try to imagine all the places they could possibly be. The problem is, of course, that figuring out where these other places are can be sometimes nearly impossible. Once we're locked into where the lost items usually are found, finding them in unfamiliar places becomes a monumental task. And sometimes we never find what we're looking for. We saw his star that's rising and have come to do him homage. The Magi probably have fascinated people since this story was first told. It's really quite a story, filled with all sorts of drama and wonder. The Magi, as you know, have been depicted in, in art in all sorts of ways, sometimes as familiarly dressed in fine robes and as important people. Some in history have even called them kings and have imagined them as some kind of foreign rulers or members of a priestly class. Many scripture scholars today see them as astrologers or ancient stargazers. No matter how we imagine them, no matter what picture of them we create in our minds, a couple of things seem to be true. These three, well, we don't really know that there were three. There could have been more. We know that there were three gifts, according to the text. But first, they seem to be genuinely interested in the world around them, interested in seeking, as best they could, answers to big questions, interested in attaching meaning to things they, that they couldn't necessarily figure out or understand completely. One doesn't stare at the night sky and record movie, movements of heavenly bodies just because. They almost certainly did so because they felt they were, there were more things they could know about in the world, more things to wonder about and seek understanding about and contemplate, more to life and the world around them than simply the day-to-day -day realities every person had to face. Life was mysterious, and they wanted a peek into that mystery. And so whoever these guys were, they were definitely searchers and seekers and inquisitive people. And secondly, they clearly weren't locked into one way of thinking. For them, there was always more, more to think about, more to experience, more to question, more to wonder about. These were people who easily could have simply stayed within the safety of their own world, within their own comfort zones, within the limits of their own limited knowledge and worldview. Instead, they appear to have been people willing to look for the answers to big questions in places 
where maybe they had never looked before or thought about before. Men willing to follow a star over great distances were clearly people with a certain wisdom and courage to think outside the box. When they were searching for important things or precious things or things bigger than themselves, how else do you wind up staring at a baby in a feeding trough and somehow recognize the importance of the moment, the importance of that experience, the importance of that person. I wonder how our lives might be different if we could do what they did. Do we think there is real meaning behind life's experiences? Are we at the mercy of chance? Do we continuously ask the big questions? Or do we think we have all the answers? Do we think of God in exactly the same way, unchanged from when we were young? Do we believe our faith is a snapshot, frozen in time? Or, we, or do we believe that faith is a journey and that if we are open to grace, God will lead us to where we need to be? Do we believe that God can only be found in the usual places? Or do we believe that God might be found where we least expect him? Sometimes we get a little too comfortable in our spiritual lives, a little too used to having the same thoughts and same ideas and the same attitudes. And sometimes that comfortability, that familiarity can lead to a kind of spiritual complacency, a rest stop on our journey from which we never leave. And so we stay in the same place spiritually, day after day, and after a while we no longer even think much about the journey, the road God wants us to lead us down. But make no mistake, when we find ourselves in that place, we will be missing out on much. When we stop looking, we can be sure that we won't find the one thing our heart so desperately needs. And so, we would be wise to not get too comfortable with our answers but rather probably need to keep asking the right questions. And we can't simply keep looking for God in all of the same places, but rather we have to accept and believe that he might be found where we least expect him, in the person we don't like, in the words of someone of a different faith, in the cries of the poor, and the tears of someone who's ill, in the person with whom we disagree about everything, in the little child, and in someone who has accumulated many years, in the joys and in the sorrows, in the successes and in the failures. These are the mangers of our lives the places where God wants to find him, to gaze upon him, and to love him. Can we be like the Magi? Do we even want to? A couple of things to think about this Epiphany Sunday.
I believe in the one God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from God, God from God. For the Holy Catholic Church, that she may welcome all who seek peace and truth in her fold, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the nations of a world in darkness, that their leaders may be drawn to the dawning brightness of Jesus Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For a universal charity, that all bigotry, narrowness, and racism may be driven from our hearts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For a spirit of humble worship in our own lives, that we may adore Jesus in the Eucharist with the devotion of the Magi who brought gifts, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For our sick, especially Carl Brubaker, and for those who are listed in the bulletin, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the souls of the faithful departed, that eternal light may shine on them, especially Dave Ayers and Margaret Formica. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all that you provide us each day, especially for the gift of your Son. Please help us to put into effect all of the gifts that you give, have given us for your glory and for the salvation of many people. We pray these things through your Son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and glory of his name, for our good and good of all of us. Pray on these gifts of your church in which are offered now not gold or frankincense or myrrh, but he who by them is proclaimed, sacrificed, and received, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord. Holy Father Almighty and Eternal God for today you have revealed the mystery of our salvation in Christ as a light for the nations. And when he appeared in our mortal nature, you made us do by the glory of his immortal nature. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers <laughs> of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith.
memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. <clears throat> Together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed just the first spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who've pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. teaching we dare to say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Jesus Christ who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Better share with one another a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy to shed under my own roof, but
Let us pray. Go before us with heavenly light, O Lord, always and everywhere that we may perceive with clear sight and revere with true affection the mystery in which you have willed us to participate through Christ our Lord. Amen. Saturday, I should say, uh, Saturday, February the 1st, we have our reverse <coughs> raffle. We will begin selling tickets next weekend. In the meantime, you can purchase tickets to the parish office. So the, the point of the raffle is to raise money for the parish. And I thank everybody who is generous. Uh, that, that's one uh, source of income. The other, there are a couple of other sources, but uh, fundraising events are also important. So I encourage people. If you, if you want to have a good time and help the parish, reverse raffle, Saturday, February 1st. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus the 